what I think about all the time, Mark, is like if you look at the thread of of my life, right? Mm-hmm. So from the West Coast, mm-hmm. you know, to Arizona, to NYU Law, mm-hmm. whatever, right? So look at the thread of my life. Mm-hmm. And you look at the thread of uh, uh, your life or anyone else's life, right? So mm-hmm. they're born somewhere, they do this, this, mm-hmm. this, and this. Mm-hmm. The moment my, I meet someone, like our lives intersect. Got like it. how beautiful in, is it that like in the whole tapestry of life that like our lives just had the opportunity to just intersect at mm-hmm. this moment? You, you also think about it, we are gonna spend however many moments together, but then our lives are gonna continue to sort of like go on right, sort of, sure. you know, to touch other people. Mm-hmm. Not only do I have an opportunity to make an impact on like your life, but how many other people can I impact as well mm-hmm. by being a proper steward of like the magic of this intersection wow. and making sure that I use it uh, uh, in the way best to sort of transfer value and opportunity. It's a beautiful thing. I just, I love it. All right, everybody, welcome back to our Speak Life podcast. We thank you so much for taking the time to join us where we're sowing seeds today for tomorrow's harvest. I have a very dynamic guest today. You do. Uh, Mr. Joseph Tillman, a good friend of mine who is vice president of the Rain Group. And at the Rain Group, they focus on integrated merchant bank advising and investing in high growth sectors of technology, media, and telecom. Joe, you started your career... um, as a lawyer, as a lawyer, as, as a, a lawyer, lawyer at uh, in in the private equity sector. Yep, and it introduced you. You wanted to get into finance, but it introduced you into the finance world from a legal perspective. That's right. And you transitioned. That's right. Into finance, right? You got a BA from California Uni- California State University, JD from NYU. During your time there, you served as the senior executive editor for NYU NYU Law Review, and I know you as a man of God who takes his business practices and his marketplace stuff and and uses it inside of the um, in, inside of the the ministry and vice yeah. versa ministry inside of the marketplace. That was so was it's an honor to have you here, my brother. Yeah, for man. real, for real. We've talked about this. Happy to be here. You are one of the most eccentric people <laughs> I know, personality wise. So yeah. you don't know enough people then. I'm I know. Not, I I'm don't. Not. I don't. But I know you, and so <laughs> I'm right. fired That's up. Right. But at the same time, you have got a great story. I mean, it's loaded, it's layered, it's, but that's who you are. You are just a, a man who brings energy, color to any situation you've Thank ever you. been a part of. Thank you. And I know you that way. I mean, I remember how we met, you know, through a mutual friend, and, and it was like, we were going back and forth early. on statistics. Early, and st- early. <laughs> Real right fast. The but I love the, de- I love the, the detail, yeah. and I think you appreciate it on, it on my end as well. So we've connected ever since, and... It's happy to have you on, brother. How Thank you me, feeling man. today, bro? Uh, I'm feeling great. Thank you um, for having me, man. It's an honor uh, to be here. I love what you've built. I love what you're trying to do. I think this is uh, the epitome of everything that you just articulated at the top of it in terms of marrying marketplace uh, with ministry, with who you are, and just like being a holistic uh, leader uh, in life, man. And so. It's an honor to be here, an honor to speak with you. I'm happy to be here. I will say it's almost like 60 degrees outside, so like, <laughs> you know, I kind of want to be outside, we, running around. Well, it is February. It is February. We're which, blessed. Which we somehow blessed. Groundhog blessed. Day. Thousand percent. Must have got us good. That's right. Thousand percent. But no, nah, man, I'm happy to be here, dude. Thanks for having me. Well, we, we're glad to have you. And uh, well, if you could, for our listeners, um, give everyone a, give everyone a little bit of an idea of where you came from, like. You know, I know you spent some where well, you grew up on the West Coast, but talk to us a little about where you came from and how you found your way into this passion of, of line of work here and now. Mm, mm, OK, uh, it's interesting. So I'm going to go. I'm going to go. All, I'm going to go all the way back. I'll try to try to be love mindful it. of time. No, no, you're yeah, good. Yeah. Don't worry so, about it. Uh, as you said, I'm sort of on the West Coast, um, grew up uh, about an hour uh, outside of L.A., um, you know, my uh, sort of family upbringing, my father uh, uh, was murdered um, early on in life. I was about five. I don't uh, think I knew that. Yeah, yeah, yeah. You're welcome. Look at just bringing just wow. nuggets. Wow, let's uh, start. Yeah, so my, my father was killed uh, when I was about five years old. Uh, my mother um, raised my sister and I, uh, you know, basically sort of on her own. 
um, really, really instilled in us just the importance of uh, taking care of business at school, right? And so my mom uh, came from humble beginnings herself. She didn't really know, um, you know, all there is to know about the world that I find myself in today. And all she knew is, hey, you know, get good grades um, and then good things will happen. And so I grew up as someone um, really just sort of focused on taking care of my business uh, sort of academically. Mm -hmm. And um, so uh, graduated high school, did well in high school for family uh, uh, sort of reasons, um, decided to stay home instead of going out to uh, sort of four year college, stayed home, went to uh, community college uh, locally immediately after high school. Um, during my first year after high school, my girlfriend uh, who I was dating at the time passed away in a car accident. Wow. Um, threw me uh, a bit for a loop uh, there. How old were you at this time? So I was 18, okay. 18 years old. Um, uh, yeah, man, look, I, you could you could have told me that the sky was red before I would have believed that, you know, we were getting ready to lose, um, you know, Mel in the tragic way that we did. Uh, so it was, it was very, very... Um, uh, it was a pivotal time in my life in terms of just really, really showing me just like the fragility of life, man. Like nothing right. is nothing is promised, uh, and I sort of learned that lesson at a very early age. And so did you have Did you have why me? At that time, you had lost your father early. Now you 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 have lost you know this young lady who's the love of your life. Did you go into that place, or did you try to rash? How did you rationalize that? <laughs> yeah, that man. Uh, so it's interesting. I didn't, I don't remember a why me about it, but more just like, uh, I was just shocked by the whole, by the whole thing. It really rocked my world, um, in a way that I can't really sort of artic Got articulate. It. Um, it, it, it actually, <clears throat> you know, it sort of it kind of like shattered, you know, my, my my worldview in a lot of ways. I was very I was a young I was a kid, right? Yeah. We were mm -hmm. we had just went to the movies. You know, at the time I was hanging out with my best friend playing X, Xbox. Mm -hmm. Like when I got the when I got the call, I had just saw her after a date like to the movies, right? And God. so um, I get the call, and the last thing I'm thinking of right. is this, right? I'm like, right. uh, you know, okay, um, um. You know what's going to happen here, whatever, and then you know a few days later we find out that uh, you know she's not going to make it, and so it just really just sort of turned my world upside down in a way, but not in a. I didn't sort of like go inward. It really okay, sort of, makes um, sense. Yeah, more more macro. Sure. Sort of type of. Totally, impact. totally. Um, so after that, um, needless to say, sort of was was trying to find my way uh, a little bit. Fortunately, my best friend at the time was uh, he was a year younger than me in high school. Um, he had graduated. He was going off to a school uh, in Arizona. He convinced me to go out and join him um, to go to this school uh, as well. It's like, hey, you know, get a fresh start, get uh, get into a new space. And so I did that, followed him to Arizona, uh, ended up walking onto the basketball team uh, there and uh, you know, spent a couple years there um, playing basketball and then eventually found my way to Cal State San Bernardino uh, where I played basketball there as well <coughs> and also studied finance. And so I graduated college in 2008 um, uh, with a degree in finance. Now, I had, um, I was always a pretty good student. I wasn't a great student. Mm -hmm. Honestly, I was a basketball player. I was more focused on, you know, hoop and hanging out with my friends and stuff Got it. Uh, than I probably should have uh, uh, been. But, um, you know, graduating in 2008 was a very challenging time yeah. in, in our country, obviously. And so, uh, you know, coming from, uh, Cal State San Bernardino, there already weren't that many, you know, jobs, um, you know, not many sort of global financial institutions, mm -hmm. you know, sending recruiting teams to sort of like find talent out of that place, uh, let alone during sort of that time period. And so fortunately for me, one of my s upper division finance courses was a course called the legal environment of business. Got it. And the, the teacher was this guy by the name of Lloyd Peake. I'll never forget Professor uh, God, he's no longer with us, but um, sort of changed changed my life. Uh, he um, he structured his class a lot like a law school class. And after that class, I did well. He pulled me into his office and he said, "Hey, have you like really thought about going to law school?" I said, yeah, I thought about it. I thought about it. Uh, uh, he said, "Look, go look into it. Not only do I think 
that you uh, would do well, but I've been teaching for 19 years. I've met maybe three people with your type of ability. Wow. I think that you would do well, and I think that um, uh, you could go on and have a very successful career uh, as a lawyer. I was like, okay, cool. Looked into it. LSAT prep course was like 1500 bucks at the time. I'm a college kid. Like, I'm <laughs> spending my money on Jordans and uh, Carl Jr. And um, I was like, yeah, man, this is 1500 bucks. Like, <laughs> I got it like that. And uh, he's right there, man, put his money where his m- mouth is. So he wrote, wrote a check, uh, got me uh, uh, into an LSAT prep course. That's crazy. And um, I remember I took the LSAT, did well, started applying uh, to law schools. And I just, like, shotgun my application out there everywhere. I was applying to schools. The first um, school I got into was, like, the University of uh, Denver or something like that. Mm-hmm. I was just, like, mm-hmm. all over. I, didn't, mm-hmm. I was just mm-hmm. uh, shotgunning application out there. And um, I was getting into every single school I applied to, and I remember calling him, and I'm like, I got into so and so, so and so, and so and so. He's like, dude, I told you, like you could do uh, really well at this. And so, um, after looking at the places I had on the table, decided to go to NYU. I was a very top ranked uh, law school at the time. I'd never spent time on the East Coast. So I see. I, so I figure, like, I did why not, not know how you got to the East yeah, Coast. Yeah, so I was like, look, dope. I can always just go spend three years in New York. And then come and then find my way, you know, sort of back uh, afterward, and um, uh, so bit the bullet and um, you know went to went, went to NYU, got to NYU and I was a fish out of water, bro. <laughs> I was a fish out of water. Like growing from Southern California, which like a lot of people, if you're from Southern California, it can very easily be just a bubble. Uh, you mm-hmm. can spend your entire life just focused on what's going on in and around you. Mm-hmm. Um, which certainly I think was the case for me in a lot of ways. And so I then get uh, to NYU and um, I'm surrounded by people who just grew up in very, very different uh, backgrounds than I did. And I was just like in awe of, uh, you know, just like the intellectual caliber of people that I was mm-hmm. around now. I was just inspired, I was intimidated. Uh, it really, really forced, I was a fish out of water. So it really forced me to grow in ways that I don't think I've, I've, I've ever grown uh, as much since. I grew the most just like as a That's human strong. being during that th- that three year period uh, in law school. It changed the way that I think, it changed the way that I uh, perceive uh, just the world the around world, me yeah. and, and everything. And so um, while in school, again, I studied finance. And so while in school, I was uh, very interested in business. I was this close to doing a JD and MBA. Uh, I didn't want to do another year of school uh, but I sort of made sure to take a lot of classes that were like cross-listed with the business school. I, mm-hmm. I stayed really, really close to uh, the finance elements. I ended up writing, up, writing my law review note on you know, Dodd-Frank and private equity. So I was very academically interested uh, in finance and mm-hmm. business. And so after graduating law school, I went to a law firm uh, called Gibson Dunn. Fortunately, the Gibson Dunn corporate department uh, allows junior associates to really span their time across a number of corporate uh, really? uh, law disciplines. Yeah, so you could do M and A, you could do finance, you could do fund formation, and so um, I spent my time at Gibson, really, really focused uh, on just like trying to develop as much of an expertise around all things sort of like private equity, mm-hmm. uh, uh, pr- you know, private equity funds. And so then I transitioned uh, to the Rain Group in 2016, originally as Associate General Counsel, yeah. and. Um, uh, for many corporate lawyers, going in house is like the holy grail. You know, mm. like you go in house, it's a much more dynamic environment uh, in a lot of ways relative to um, a lot, a lot from you're closer to the business side. Um, you usually get your hands in a lot more operational elements of the business. Mm. And so um, I was like, great, like I'm in house, the Rain Group, um, sort of global uh, media entertainment focused merchant bank, like. As far as com- companies go, these are work- I'm working with like the dopest companies, like the most interesting wow. uh, um, sort of trends and, and, and theses and things like that. And this so, is still as a lawyer. As a lawyer. Got as it. a lawyer. So mm-hmm. I was associate general counsel. And you had, so this other, the, the first company, this is all connected? So Gibson Dunn. Gibson so I went to so law school. Mm-hmm. Then I went to Gibson Dunn and I was um, an associate attorney. So just a, cor- a corporate lawyer. Makes sense. Working for a ton of clients. All Got it. Like, various industries or whatever, but with a focus on sort of private equity. Okay. And then when I go to Ra- the, when I go to the Rain Group. You interviewed to go to the Rain Group. As you weren't lawyer. referred out. I uh headhunter reached Got out or something it. totally. Like that. They were they were looking to expand their legal team. Um a guy who I had worked with previously at Gibson was the then 
deputy general counsel at Ray. Yeah, Ray. And so when the headhunter called, I picked up the phone, called him. He ended up being my boss, uh, you know, for the first. Uh, and you got, you went there as a chief legal counsel. I, no, I went as associate general counsel. So got it. he was the deputy general counsel. The general counsel I had actually just left. Okay. So he was basically like the acting general counsel, got it. and I was sort of uh, working underneath him. Got it. Makes sense. Uh, with a focus on the private equity side sure. of our uh, side of our business. And um, dude, I remember. Uh, so I joined 2016. By January of 2017, I was already like, oh, snap. Like, this ain't it. <laughs> right? Honestly, bro, so I'll be very, very, very honest. Um, because, again, like, at the law firm, I was already feeling a little bit like a little bit of malaise with mm-hmm. my job. Like, is this is the work interesting enough? Mm-hmm. Am I having f- enough fun? Mm-hmm. Um, and all my mentors at the time say, hey, go in-house. Like, go be in-house counsel. It's a much right. better environment. I go here, and, like, it was a much better environment. Like, the people, with all, all that. But the core of my function, like, the core of my role was, like, reading, writing, negotiating, you know, 80 to 100-page legal agreements. Right. And so, like, that's all cool, but, like, <laughs> It's okay, Joe. Like, <laughs> where are my documents? You know what I'm saying? And so, uh, like all of this, like all like the relationship. <laughs> that's, so, like all where are my documents? <laughs> all, all of. I mean, you got lawyers. Like everyone has lawyers here. Um, I love it. <laughs> and look, and that's not, that's not to like put down absolutely lawyers. Absolutely, like, it, it is very like absolutely. intellectually rigorous sort of like work. But yeah. again, like all the relationship building. Mm-hmm. Um, which I love, uh, which is a huge part of who I am. Like there wasn't really that much room to sort of like flex those type of muscles in that role. And so that relationship building stuff you had your whole life, you knew it was there. Yeah. And did you think you were going to find it in law or did you, or did you get to law and figure out I, this, I got to get more, I got to str- spread my wings. Bro, honestly, so yeah, it's, it's a great question. I, I didn't, I didn't know whether I would be able to get this in law. Got it. I went to law school really with the idea, like, I want to be a lawyer and go make money. Yeah, makes sense. Right, right? So I come, makes from, sense. You know, come from humble be- 22, beginnings. 22, 23 years old. I just, like, I need to, I need bread. <laughs> Period, right? And so I know. This I know, is one way. This to, is one way. There's a fast track to it. thousand percent. The I world get it. had just blown no up. Doubt. Like, I need bread. Like, <laughs> I'm going down this path. It's very, very clear. Makes like, sense. If, if I go this path and I do well, the bread's there. Yeah, 100%. So I'm going to go do it. <laughs> um, and so in a lot of ways, all of this stuff around, like, uh, how I can flex all of the, the, like, the various facets of me to the benefit of my work, and uh, that was, like, secondary. Secondary. You know? Way so. and Which so, makes sense, starting makes out. Sense. Makes yeah, sense. Man. Yep. I, and so uh, I sort of found all of this out over As time. you were going. Like, as yep. I was going. Perfect. Um, and so, yeah, man, so look, so I figured out, so uh, January of 17, I was like, okay, I want to do something else. But like, I had just got, I had just gotten there. Mm-hmm. I was like, maybe I just need to sort of do more stuff and um, try to expand my skill set. And so I spent all of 2017, you know, doing my job, like doing my job and making sure that I was uh, uh, impressing folks and um, uh, taking care of business. But like on my nights and weekends, I was like exploring other stuff, like. Do I want to get into politics? Do I want to get into um, uh, technology? Do I want to get into like all of these various areas? And so uh, basically a year had passed and I'd figured out a lot of things that I didn't want to do, but I still didn't know what it is that I wanted to do. Mm-hmm. And so I finally just went into uh, you know, the office of, you know, sort of senior leadership at the firm. I just put my cards out on the table. I said, hey, look, like I'm not going to be someone who's, interviewing behind you guys' back or anything like that. Like, you guys gave me a shot here, and I'm appreciative of it. Um, but I'm miserable in doing what I'm doing. Like, it's just, like, doesn't jive with who I am, who I want to be. Right. I've got to figure out something else, even if it's me sitting on my couch for six months and figuring out. I've just, like, got to do. But you had no idea what the next move for you was. No idea. Wow. That's no impressive. Idea. Bro, so it was t- it was terrifying, bro. Wow. It was terrifying. So we talk about the faith, uh, uh, the, the faith and 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 um, and the marketplace, sort of like marriage. So January two thousand, at the beginning of every year, I do a fast, mm-hmm. which we, which, yep. which um, uh, you know. So mm-hmm. um, my fast, I uh, usually it's the first week of every year, mm-hmm. and I do a lot of journaling during mm-hmm. this time. Mm-hmm. So January two thousand seventeen, 
I remember my, 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 my journal entry. I'm like, God, I just got into this role. Mm-hmm. I'm supposed to be joyful and excited. And like, I'm struggling, like I'm miserable. I'm not happy. Like help me figure out what my, the true North is. And, um, I remember after a year, so January 18, I sorry, January, 2018, mm-hmm. I was doing my fast and I was like, you know what? Let me look at what I was journaling about a year ago. I love it. I looked at my journal entry January 10th or January 12th, 2017. And um, I read that journal entry and it hit me like a ton of bricks, bro. Mm. It hit me like a ton of bricks that a year of my life had passed. Again, mm. I sort of checked off a bunch of other stuff that I didn't want to do, mm-hmm. but I was still doing the thing that I did not want to wow. do. And that was the catalyst uh, that I had to go into that office yes. and make a change. And so, I love that. Um, obviously, I had to get, my, you know, Serena and I were married, um, you know, just uh, sort of a little over a uh, over a year at this point, okay. had to get signed off from the boss. <laughs> uh, obviously, we had enough in our savings that if I needed to go sit on the couch for a while, it would be fine. Got it. I had uh, people in my life who um, I sort of, who I worked shocked this idea around mm-hmm. all that kind of stuff. And um, yeah, man, I just went into the office. So the fear of me having that conversation was actually much worse than the conversation. Right. Right. And fortunately for me, three of the five co-founding partners of my firm were all former lawyers. And so like, they, they were knew. also they, oh, knew, they like understood. they were very simpatico with like okay. this sort of story uh, uh, where I was going through, and so that also helped very well. And so, but that conversation led to a series of conversations that led that ended up um, having me sort of switch over um, uh, to the business side. And man, I tell you, so I mean, I've got uh, three tattoos that are basically one tattoo. You know, the first one's you know, thank you, Lord. There's an image of me, you know, playing. Uh, with a basketball in my right hand and a Bible under my left arm. Mm. I got this when I got my basketball scholarship Mm -hmm. uh, to Cal State. Uh, This one says, for keeping me. So thank you, Lord, for keeping me. Mm -hmm. It's a picture. uh, It's me. There's an angel. It's just uh, Melissa, my girlfriend, who died uh, in a car accident, enveloping me in her wings, and he's sort of studying a book. I got this one after I graduated law school. So thank you, Lord, for keeping me. And after that that conversation, I got another one. It says, uh, and reminding me that I get one life. And Oof. it's written backwards in a mirror. So I see it every day when I look in the mirror. Oof. I see this tattoo on Oof. my chest. That reminds me, dude, you get one life. Oof. You get one time around, Oof. bro. You get one time that is, around. That's devastating. That's, I never, Mark, I never wanted to forget that point in my life because all of the fear uh, that I had to overcome in order to get past, um, in order to sort of like have that conversation, dude, like it was palpable. It was Thick. Mm. I was like grappling with it. I was mm. struggling with it. And mm. now on the other side of that decision, mm. my life has just completely taken off. Like it's just, it's, it was, it was phenomenal. So I never want to forget uh, uh, that experience. And uh, the tattoo does a, a good job of reminding me of it. Dude. <laughs> I mean, you just rocked me. <laughs> yeah, man. I'm trying to recalibrate <laughs> right now. God, man, that um, was faithful, bro. So, all right, the journey to the financial side of the brain group. You were you you said the fear was palpable. You didn't know how to have the conversation. You had it. You didn't want to waste. You couldn't waste another day after couldn't looking back it. in your journal and seeing that a year went by and you're still grappling with this. Which is how old were you then? Uh, I don't know. So. Early 30s. Okay. And so part of the message. had a wife, been a lawyer this, for years. This is, this is, that's a huge message that you tattooed on your chest, right? And so for young people watching this, we're all like at a certain age, you're going through the career changes. You're going through like, what do I want to be? Who am I? What am I doing here? How am I get, how did I get here? You know, what do I want to do? Some people find it earlier than others. But if you don't draw a line in the sand that day, you're, you're fighting Still something fighting. that, and so this, you only get one life is make a decision. Make a decision. Be happy with who you are and where you're going. You know, sometimes you got to be ruthless about it. But at the end of the day, you need to find that version of you so you can make it to where you want to be and, and, and be able to look at yourself in the mirror and have joy, right? I mean, I that. that's really what what I what had that. transpired after that. I believe and that. And so, what I'm hearing, or what I've what you have stated, with these pivotal pivotal moments in your life, that created pivotal tattoos, 
you know, and those tattoos represent your core belief and character. And so exactly this right. was a pivotal move. Now, yeah. you go into finance. Did you know when you got there that that's where you were supposed to be, or did that take time too? That took time too. Okay. That took time. Bro, I was like— So this recommendation— you're like, what are you? What are you hoping ha happens with this conversation after they make the recommendation? Are you like, I gotta think about this. Like, I'll try it, or do you? Do you? Do you actually go home and 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 spend a, a decent amount of time before you make that move? Uh, yes, and so, <laughs> I mean, so so look well, at at the core at the core of the decision on their on on their end. Mm -hmm. I'm putting words in their mouth, but this is yeah. sort of, as I understand. They recognize that here's a guy who is talented, who's smart, works hard, mm -hmm. and um, you know, just, it's like trying to sort of do a good job. Is a good team is, is a good teammate, right? And so, mm -hmm. someone like that, if you're building an organization, sure, you want you want yeah. athletes, makes you sense. Want, you want athletes, right? <laughs> and so, I think from their perspective, they were like, look, like here's a spot for this guy. Like, try it, like, try right, it out. Sure. And so that's really what it was at the outset. It was like, hey, look, try this, try this out. Let's see if, let's see if this works. And um, we'll go from there. And since then, it is like the, the it's just blossomed and wow. sort of like grown. And I think for them, I'm so thankful that they took a shot. Yeah. Uh, and I try to work every day to make sure that they get that return right. uh, on, on the investment. That's strong. Uh, but at the same time, man, it was, it was validating mm. to sort of like have like that recommendation from people who you respect and that's you and, and you consider titans of industry in a lot of ways. That's true. And they say like, yeah, look, like you're we, we see potential in you and we want you to to uh, to grow that here. And so, how long did it take you to find out I'm where I need to be? Yeah, that's a good. Uh, I'm still I, I still <laughs> I'm, I'm still trying to figure that. Well, out. <laughs> I'm, no, look, so, so so I will I will say this like. I maintain a higher order perspective about all this stuff, as, yeah. as you know, and as we talk mm -hmm. about. And I will say, man, like one of the things that I love the most about uh, this firm, this role, is that it puts me in contact with um, a lot of people, um, founders, management teams, investors, uh, people throughout the media, entertainment, and financial ecosystem. Mm -hmm. uh, it allows me to contact and, and be in touch with a lot of a lot of people mm. and because the relationship building and um that the the sort of like making connections with people is like such a big part of sort of who i am um uh this role is just the fulfillment of like so much of what it means to be me I you know it. like i get to connect with so many people in the professional context but like it's all about like business at any yeah. level. It's about relationships, yeah, no right? And I get the opportunity to build real relationships mm -hmm. with people and provide value, mm. you know, and to provide an opportunity for, um, I to provide a space for which opportunities that come into my life to be reciprocated onto others. Makes I can sense. be a platform from which value uh, gets sort of spread out to other people. I just love that, bro. Mm -hmm. I love it. The, the The way that I sort of think about this. Is um <laughs> I, I've talk, I I talk to uh, uh, your boy about this is like what I think about all the time, Mark is like if you look at the thread of of my life, right? Mm -hmm. So from the West Coast, mm -hmm. you know, to Arizona, to NYU Law, mm -hmm. whatever, right? So look at the thread of my life, mm -hmm. and you look at the thread of uh, uh, your life or anyone else's life, right? So mm -hmm. they're born somewhere, they do this, this, mm -hmm. this, and this. Mm -hmm. The moment. My, I meet someone like our lives intersect. Got like, it. how beautiful in is it that like in the whole tapestry of life that like our lives just had the opportunity to just intersect at mm. this moment? Mm. That in and of itself is beautiful. But if you also think about it, we are going to spend however many moments together. It's a small moment, maybe it's a lot, whatever. Mm. But then our lives are going to continue to sort of like go on, right. and sort of sure. meet and touch, touch other people. Mm. So not only do I have an opportunity to make an impact on like your life, but how many other people can I impact as well mm. by being a proper steward of like the magic of this intersection wow. and making sure that I use it uh, uh, in the way best 
to sort of transfer value and opportunity. It's a beautiful thing. I just, I love it. I love it, Mario. It, it makes me. I've never more, heard it said like it's that beautiful, before. Bro. It's beautiful. You sound like you talk about like art or like fine dining cuisine, for, like you the <laughs> <Yeah>. chef. <laughs> and I never heard it said like that before. That's really good. I believe, I believe it, Mark. It is, um, I'm, I'm a natural introvert. Mm. I'm naturally introverted. I spend a lot of time in my head. Uh, but one of the things I love most is I can walk through New York City, you know, with headphones on, being alone, surrounded by thousands of people, and just wondering, man, just like where did this person's life uh, uh, sort of start from? Like, how did they get here? Am I ever? I'm passing someone on the street. Am I ever going to see that person again? Who knows? Like, maybe, maybe not. Hmm. Where did they come from? Where are they going? Um, and I think about this stuff all the time. And because I have that perspective constantly running in the background, I always think about whenever I'm interacting with someone, how can I make sure and I'm, again, a proper sort of steward of that moment. Mm -hmm. And life is a series of moments, man. And you don't know when it's up. You only get one, you only get one time. <laughs> we, get a we get a series of moments, <laughs> then the clock is up. So, uh, Ooh, baby. yeah, bro. You drop a fire. Bro. It's uh, we talk about speak life, man. It's yes, uh, sir. it's it is core to my operating system, um, and the space that I am in now uh, allows me to act this out. It allows me to just wring as much joy out of every single day uh, that I possibly can. So it's a beautiful thing. It's admirable. I watch you. You know what I'm saying? I watch you. I, I you know I was talking to a, 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 a mutual friend of ours. Um, Jacob, who who is uh, who's a, f a very fine barber in New Jersey, and we were laughing one day. I'm in the chair, <laughs> and I, I was like, "Yo, Joe is everywhere," <laughs> 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 and yo, he said, "I know." He makes it look easy. No. Bro. And I was that was the best way to say it ever <laughs> is oh, that you, you make looking everywhere be easy. Thank you, man. And it's like admirable. Thank you. But thank you. Listening to your core, listening to the fabrics that are inside you brings great brings a huge smile to my face. Because I know you obviously as a guy who brings joy to a lot of scenarios that he's in, who's a very funny guy. Loves cracking jokes, Love loves cracking being jokes. a prankster in some way, yeah, but very serious guy. And so hearing the way you view relationships and your whole inner core lit up like you were a kid in a candy Love store it. says so much to me, you know. Now you as a VP, you know, and helping this, the rain group, bring in and, and make these connections come to life mm -hmm. to some degree. They don't always work, but a lot of times they do, and a lot of times that's the goal. What exactly are you doing day-to-day -day in the marketplace? Yeah, so a big, part, a big part of what I do is connecting companies with people who want to deploy capital. Into, in, into, into companies, right? Okay. And so um, I will say the best articulation of my role is just connecting people and opportunities, okay. right? So that's, I'll, I wanna be mindful. I don't know what, we're also regulated by FINRA. Like sure. I got a compliance department. Mm -hmm. I don't know sort of like how much into detail I can get about yep. my sure. uh, sort of role, but like at base, dude, it is like my, my role is exactly what, um, uh, it's exactly what I'm sort of like put on like this earth, earth to, to do, do, right? It's just sort of like help people um, uh, sort of like find opportunities in ways that are going to like create value for everyone, everyone around. Okay. So just to get a little more granular, sure. and if we can't go there, we can't, but who is providing the capital? Investors, investors. So, so you're in the middle of the transaction. Yeah, so I'll, so rain. I'll I'll sort of talk about yes. in the rain in, in the rain context yep. just in, in general. So the rain group is uh, a merchant bank in the most traditional sense of the word, which means we have capital to deploy on behalf of our own limited partners. So we out, go out sure. and raise uh, capital from LPs, and we can deploy that capital into businesses. So we are investing um, our LPs dollars, uh, you know, into businesses where we feel like we have a differentiated. Um, lens into creating value and sort of being helpful 
uh, sort of going forward. And we do that across different stages, across different companies. But generally speaking, for the focus on media, uh, the high growth sectors of like technology, media, and entertainment. Got it. We also have an advisory business. So we are both investors and we are also advisors, which is to say, if for whatever reason, a company looking for capital, like it is not, it doesn't make the most sense for, for you, the like limited for, partners like, to like for our, for our, for our capital, 100%. we can be advisors and help to make sure that those management teams uh, and those founders get access to the right type of capital. Makes and sense. we can do that over time. Like a lot of our biggest, biggest successes have been when we partner with companies um, uh, over many, many, many years, advising them or investing in them or investing and advising in them like to, to help them uh, achieve various strategic goals throughout their sort of life mm. cycle. And so it's a broad platform, but it's also a deep platform in that we only focus, you know, we do uh, sort of t uh, tech, media, and telecom. And so we're not doing industrials. Right. We're not doing um, uh, oil and gas or anything like that. Like we are deep in the sectors that we are deep in, and it allows us to help companies navigate all different sort of types of, uh, challenges that they face and uh, ultimately achieve their strategic goals. Love it. Talk to me a little bit more about media. You say, you know, telecom tech and media, right? I feel like we could, I feel like telecom kind of speaks for itself, mm -hmm. but tech and media probably run a film, different film, TV, digital media, advertising. So media and like the most. And these, and these are firms. These are companies. 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 So, so could be, um, you know, sort of content production studios could mm -hmm. be companies that are um, sort of servicing uh, the content production or content distribution uh, ecosystem. It could be uh, companies that are more focused on the advertising uh, s uh, space, both in terms of connecting brands um, uh, sort of with their audiences, as well as, you know, helping, uh, you know, marketers sort of like think about how to best optimize the campaigns and things like that. There's s a whole host of areas within uh, media, uh, which our sort of team can be involved in. So fortunately, so for me, within TMT, I'm a generalist. So like I have, uh, uh, my remit spans across all of tech, tech, media, and telecom, specifically with, I, with, with a focus on, um, you know, sort of capital raising, capital formation. Uh, but uh, I have colleagues that focus exclusively on media, exclusively on sports, exclusively on gaming, exclusively on music. And so the beautiful thing also about my job is like, I have these experts who are so, so deep mm. in these space. Like as between me and 99% of the population, like sure, I'll sort of uh, you know, talk circles around people mm -hmm. um, across all things TMT. But you get one of my sector focus experts uh, in the room and it's just like, give me the popcorn, man. I'm just like, I'm learning, mm. I'm soaking. It is, it, is a, it is a beautiful thing. So also we talk about um, you know, relationships and things like that. I consider myself fortunate to also be connected with a whole, um, sort of company full of colleagues who are all sort of like brilliant and uh, rock stars in their own right and just um, uh, sort of forces of nature like in their spaces. And it's just like, I learn stuff every single day, mm. every single day, every minute of every day. <laughs> it's great. It's, it, 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 it's amazing, bro. I love it. But you're a lifelong learner. I, I want for, for our audience, right? We talk a lot to the business community. Um, I want you to talk about or share with us how do you focus on building relationships? You're a guy, as you talk, it's just oozing out of you from every area of everything yeah. you're saying, right? And so there's an art to it at times, Joe. Like, you know, it's not just meeting somebody and saying, hey, let's connect. That doesn't typically work. Talk to us from your perspective mm -hmm. on how you, again, you put that cross there. We meet this intersection. How do you make something of this and and, and turn this into more than just this crossing sure. of, of an intersection. We are all human beings, bro. You can be the CEO of the biggest Fortune 500 company. You can be someone working in the mail room. You can, we are all human beings. We were born, we have needs, we have people um, in our lives that we care about. We're all sort of like human beings. And so when I talk about um, maintaining a higher order perspective, it is that is the first thing that I always sort of keep in keep in mind. Like I'm talking to another human mm -hmm. that has needs and wants and dreams and goals in the same way that I do. Mm -hmm. I want to sort of keep that uh, sort of keep that in mind. Yeah. Number two, 
uh, I've talked about this idea that my job is to reciprocate, is to make sure that opportunities do not terminate on me. Things that I get I, to be a steward. I'm. We talk about we're believers. We talk about this idea of stewardship. Mm-hmm. I am a steward of all the opportunities that God has fortunately sort of like put into my life. And so, my job in connecting with someone is to always be thinking about how I can add. How can I help you? How can I add value to you? It is not. I've been given a a ton. It is not for me. It is for the people that I come in contact with. So that is sort of like number two. Okay. If you keep those two guiding principles, you can connect with anyone. You can connect with it. You can connect with anyone, really, because like at base, like you're you're a human. Like I can get you a drink of water, right? Like I can. You have family members. I can ask you like like how are things with your how are things with your kids? Mm-hmm. I have small kids. Maybe there's some advice I can share. You all like a lot of people also. You know, I feel like many people want to be helpful. They want to be mm-hmm. um, a resource to others as well. So maybe it's for me to provide a space for you to sort of like pour into me and sort of give me some advice mm-hmm. or whatever. Like there's always, if you're always thinking about how can I be helpful to someone, there's never, you'll never not have anything to talk about. <laughs> you never, ha- you never have anything to talk about. And so, and even if for whatever reason that rubs the person the wrong way or, you know, they're not in the right space, um, you know, to have that type of conversation, that's okay. That, that's okay. At least if I hear about your needs, I can, I can keep you in mind. I can, I mean, so again, in the spiritual context, I can be praying for you, right? Mm-hmm. Or I can like just understand a little bit more about what makes you tick and what matters to you so that when I do see something in the marketplace that could be relevant, at least I'd know to pick up the phone and uh, or shoot you a note or uh, otherwise think of you. So you can always, if, if, if you're always just like trying to be helpful and if that in and of itself uh, um, uh, can be a driver and sort of a motivator for you. You can always find ways to connect people. Now, how do you feel? I love it. How do you feel about someone that might be initially closed off that you're trying to open up? Because in order to, I I want to be helpful. 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 It's here, right? In order to get to that, conversations open up and turn into something where you're getting some some jewels from the person, right, mm-hmm. of some sort. In order to, you know, I find out at least I find a lot that people you meet them, and they're not really expecting anything more than that mm-hmm. than than a handshake at mm-hmm. times. So it's definitely on the person, one of the two. If I meet you, yeah. it's on it's on me or you to take it to another level, <clears throat> to to ever turn it into anything. And so it seems like for from what I'm hearing is you take that onus a lot of the time is that would that be a fair statement or yeah that's a fair that, that's a fair statement and it doesn't but it doesn't necessarily have to be um doesn't necessarily have to be quote like within the four corners of like business sure like business related mm-hmm. um but yeah i always I, one of the things that i always try to make sure to do i end most if not every conversation with like how can i be is, is there some way i can be helpful mm-hmm. right Sometimes, especially like a lot of my old head cat, like I have like mentors mm-hmm. and people like they're like, "No, young man, just keep doing what you're doing." And I'm just like, "Okay, like <laughs> I've gotten so much out of this conversation. Like, there's got to be something I can do to be helpful right. uh, uh, to you." But a lot of times, people who are, um, you know, years and years ahead of the game, mm-hmm. like they just get joy out of seeing yeah. someone else come up when. and sort of trying to do things um, uh, the the right way. And so. I always just a- out make the ask. That's what I would say to everyone. Like, so that's the ask. Yeah. How can I be helpful? How can to I be you? helpful? Wow. And it might and it might not again. It might not be anything tangible today, but it might next. It might next time, and that's okay. And either one of those are okay. But like you at least sort of like try uh, uh, try to do that for people because again, man, you're one time around. No doubt. So you're deaf. You're 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 um, in the middle of the finance sector. And finance is, is, is disrupted by different things. Interest rates going up, interest rates going down, um, different things that are happening in the news, in the marketplace, the markets themselves. Um, you've got to have a steady hand yeah. to survive as long as you have. How do you view you know, the things happening around you that you have no control over to still be able to do what you need to do day in and day out which is connect people to a need. Yeah. 
Yeah, so you said something a few minutes ago um, that I'll sort of highlight. It's like being a lifelong learner, right? And so one of the things that I try to be, I try to be a student of history. I try to be a student of people. I try to be a student of now. And so I am always trying to learn. So one of the big things um, about going to law school is like it teach it, te- it taught me how to think. It teaches you how to think like a lawyer. There's a very, very um, specific way that like lawyers think it sort of tends to orient around like issue spotting. So like if you look at like how do you take a test in law school, they sort of give you like a fact pattern. Johnny was driving down the street. He got a text message. He looked at it. He swerved and he hit a semi truck. The semi truck turned over and a two by four, a two by four flew off the semi truck, flew 50 feet, hit a farmer, and the farmer fell back and tripped a switch on his tractor. The tractor rolled down and like caused a fire at Jim's farm down the road. Is the text message guy liable for <laughs> the Jim's right? It was so bad. I was waiting for the cat. Yeah, no, I, I was gonna laugh. I was just holding it. Yeah, so, I'm I'm like, that's, that's very so, so that's a very but I love it. Yeah, very sort of uh, uh, sort of a high level whatever sort of uh, characterization of it. But sort of generally speaking, it's sort of like those types of like questions uh, you get asked and like you are tasked with basically like understanding all the facts uh, what facts you do have what facts you don't have think about like okay what are the issues based on the information that is presented to you what additional information do you need in order to understand whether or not there are uh, other issues that you sort of aren't aware like that just a whole dynamic sort of law school teaches you how to think in that way and that is like how I move in life. My wife and I were actually just talking about this last night. Um, so my brain is like always working in that way. It's like I'm always digesting information. I'm sort of like issue spotting. What do I know? What don't I know? And sort of like drawing connection. And so I am a lifelong learner. I try to uh, make sure to uh, sort of like keep as wide of an aperture as I possibly can into the, uh, into the information that I am um, gathering and then I just like try to make the best deci- decisions based on the information that I have. And okay. So um, it's not really I know it's not really as a, a concrete of answer uh, uh, as you perhaps might have been thinking, but just like honestly, do how I do it is like I just like always um, I always try to soak up as much information as I possibly can, and I always try to process it through the lens of like, okay, what do I know? What don't I know? And then what decision can I make based on? Uh, the information that I have in front of me. Got it. Makes sense. Yeah. What do you intake on oh. a daily basis to to operate? It's great. Yes. Yeah. <laughs> so, yeah. So I'm, I'm, bro. <laughs> seriously. I, so, so I'm, I'm like crazy about this. So uh, I listen to pod. I listen to podcasts. I listen to audio books. I listen to. There's a great app uh, uh, called Headway. There's Blinkist. There's like summaries of like books. Mm-hmm. I will listen to an audio book. And then I'll listen to the summary of the audiobook afterwards that sort of like reinforces the main points. Mm-hmm. But like uh, I work out every morning and I will listen to audiobooks while I work, work out. out. I think about it as like training both my body and, and my, my mind, mind all the time uh, at the same time. And so podcasts and audiobooks a ton. I read a lot of Four Dummies books. Okay. Bro, people don't hate on Four Dummies, Four <laughs> Dummies books. Bro, they take some of the most complex uh, subject matter and just like digest it in, I love that. in, in, in the most um, or sort of distill it down to the most adjustable forms. Re- read a lot of Four Dummies books. Um, uh, because I have uh, a large network, I'm always talking to people. I ask, I just ask a lot of questions. I just like hear a lot and I try to like soak, uh, soak a lot in. And then um, uh, uh, I also say too, dude, like I, I try not to get too focused on like any one thing, whether it's like a show or a movie or like what I try to, I try, I try to also just like main, maintain like a diverse array of like interests. Mm-hmm. Um, and that puts me in touch with a bunch of different people and it exposes me to a bunch of different things that just also feed, you know, that machine. The Got yeah. it. What are, are two or three of your, your favorite podcasts that you make sure you listen to each week? Yep. 20 VC, um, uh, invest like the best. And then uh, I also said I've liked uh, Trevor Noah's new podcast uh, uh, that he just released on on Spotify. Um, that dude's brilliant. He is. He's he's brilliant. Mm. Uh, he's funny, 
And um, I always just like love how he has these conversations and he has a way of structuring these things where you feel like you're on the couch right there, just like mm-hmm. sitting like mm-hmm. in a room having this conversation. He is, so, he does. Yeah, yeah, I'd say uh, those, th- those three are ones I would, uh, I would highlight. No doubt. And what yeah. about a couple books that you'd recommend that, that shifted you? Books that moved you? Uh, shifted me, that moved me. Um, there's so there there's so many. Uh, so there's one. I'm blanking on the title. I'll I'll give it to you, and so you can sort of post it in the notes. But it was basically this uh, exploration into the modern family, and like contrasting it with uh, how families the family dynamics were sort of like pre, um, like pre the agrarian sort of like age, mm-hmm. and also um, uh, sort of also like like pre and post industrial revolution exploring this notion of multi-generational families and what it means to like uh, uh, what, what it means to have create space for your kids to learn from the various generations and to sort of like be really really brought up with this idea of legacy like top of mind uh, from beginning to end and it was just like it was just really really insightful uh, in in helping me think about how I want to structure my own like my own sort of like family. Wow. Um, uh, so I'd say that that was that was one. And then uh, actually my golf coach uh, just this was a re- recent one, but um, reminded me that I should reread. And so I re listened to uh, the Art of War. Uh, uh, Sun Tzu. Sun Tzu. And um, uh, yeah, man, that one. For for some reason, I I hadn't read it since you know sort of grade school, but um, uh, it really really highlighted uh, a lot of things that were in my mind pertinent for business, but also for me trying to learn golf because I suck at golf and I'm trying to get better. Uh-huh. <laughs> You're a beast out there. Don't front. Bro, I'm, I'm trash, but I'm I'm going to be a problem. I'm telling you, I'm looking at the people. I'm going to be a problem at golf. I'm telling you right now. There's a bunch of people right now who are just like, you got to give me all type of strokes right now. Give me like a year or two. It's going to be a problem. I'm telling you this right now. I'm going to look back at this podcast. I'm just going to start sending this podcast to people. Like, yo, I just bodied you on golf. Like, look at this podcast. I predict that. Yo, when you think about 2024, market conditions, things you're anticipating in election year, um, what are some things on the horizon that you look at that you're looking out for, that you that you as a practitioner of, of your business have to watch out for? You, you hear about interest rates potentially dropping. Yeah. You know, talk to us a little bit about, educate us in that way from your shoes because you're right in the middle of the financial sector. Yeah, I, so I'd say one of the things that I'm most, most excited about is like it feels as if the last couple of years uh, certainly been fraught with a lot of volatility uh, you know, from a global financial market perspective. But I think people are starting to understand a little bit more about what it means to price risk in this market. Like people are starting to realize that uh, obviously the times of sort of free money mm-hmm. um, uh, are, are sort of long gone and aren't coming back. Um, but like things are starting to normalize in some, in, in many different sort of pockets of uh, the alternative space in a way that like is are allowing people to start to do business on a regular sort of basis mm-hmm. again. Um, and so that I'm encouraged about. Uh, I'd also say that again, because we are sitting at the forefront of so many trends um, across technology, media and telecom, you know, there are very, very interesting um, sort of pockets of confluence in terms of like where digital media is overlapping with sports, where sort of gaming is overlapping with music. And um, I'm excited to see how disruption, technological disruption, innovation, et cetera, um, is going to both uh, sort of spur along those convergences, sort of make them happen uh, sort of faster, uh, and also sort of create new pockets of convergence that we perhaps even aren't thinking about now. I think it's like really, really cool to see, and I consider myself really privileged to be on the forefront uh, That's true. Of, of all that stuff. So those are two general um, uh, areas I'd say like I'm very, very excited about. As you bring up technology, mm-hmm. you I remember sitting down with you a few months back and 
you were talking about AI. Bro. <laughs> Crazy. You are you have devoured this topic yep. and are extremely excited about it. Can you talk to us a little bit about where AI is right now and where you see it continuing to change and move the dynamic in society, continue to change and move the conversation around what you know what the early conversation was? It's gonna make us all lose our jobs. And then in four months, people go, you're not going to lose your job. You need to learn how to use AI to do, be better at your job and more efficient. Yeah. I mean, look, so I want to hear from you. You live, you live, breathe, eat this space daily. Yeah. The, I'm, so for, I, I would not say I would not say that there are people who are certainly much sort of smarter and deeper on this topic. Uh, than I, but to your point, I, I'm certainly uh, well equipped, uh, to very, very interested in it, and I sort of follow uh, the trends in general. I would say, just like the core notion of eliminating a lot of like rote, mundane, yeah, um, sort of like tasks, I think is very real and it's very, very exciting. I think mm -hmm. the ability to sort of free up intellectual capital to like actually go out and attack real. Makes sense. Uh, like real problems and issues. I think it's like that's like fundamentally um, exciting, uh, exciting to me. Number two, I think, you know, with uh, the developments and all these like large language models and, uh, you know, the chat GPTs of the world and all that kind of stuff, like what it has done is allowed like the concept of just like whiteboarding to just go to a completely different yes, level. Yes. You will never <laughs> have to be, again, like put aside problems with hallucination and all that sort of stuff, but just like a as a general notion, you will never have to be just like at a complete standing start on any topic ever, ever right? Again. You, you can, you, ever, like ever That's in crazy. life. Like, you, can, you can, if you know how to ask these things, the questions in the, in the right way, you can literally get an overview of any topic in as digestible format as you need. You can literally tell me, hey, explain rocket science to me like I'm a 12 year old. <laughs> Right, and it'll say, you know, it'll sort of spit out a um, a response, and you say, mm, actually, explain to me like I'm a four year old, and it'll be completely different, right? Like, I think just like that uh, idea, oh. properly harnessed, man, it's just gonna unleash so much human potential, dude. It's um, it's crazy. I, I think that we are incredibly blessed and fortunate to live at a time where um, access to information has never been more open than at any point in human history. Communication across the globe instantly for free. You mm. can literally open up WhatsApp, talk to someone in China and Singapore right now and get global perspectives on most topics in an instant. So the ability of like some kid growing up in inner city Detroit or something like that to be able to expand outside of the confines of like their birth and like their situation um, is like very, very like the, the, that those possibilities are very very real and also the ability to like for someone who's sitting in the heart of Silicon Valley ex exposed to a ton of uh, innovation and um, uh, you know sort of capital and uh, uh, and all those things like to be able to take their space to a completely different level as well like it's just that is that is real. That is like here. It is like now. <laughs> we talk about Jacob in the barbershop. Bro, I'm mean in the barbershop asking Chat GPT about like, you know, what's the best way to make mochi ice cream? Randomly. Just because like I like mochi ice cream. I want to know like if I ever wanted to go make it one day, like I could do that. That's wild. <laughs> That's just, I don't know. It's just wild, man. And so like we have these tools. Um, we can use these tools. They're accessible tools. And uh, um, it's just going to unlock uh, so much more human potential uh, in ways that, like, I'm, uh, I'm really excited about. But at the same time, man, zombie apocalypse is, is right around the corner, too, bro. <laughs> ChatGPT, how do I use a sword? I'm definitely going to be the dude with the sword. <laughs> how do I use this sword? <laughs> How do I use this sword? Uh, AI? Yeah, man. I feel you. How do you balance risk and reward when making investment decisions? How do I balance? Uh, so I will, I, will, I will answer this in like the personal 
personal context, uh, when I make like investment investment decisions for my, for, for myself, I am uh, I'm risk on right now. I'm I'm risk I'm risk all the way on. I want moonshot <laughs> type opportunities. <laughs> I want life changing uh, uh, type of growth uh, so the slash earnings potential uh, in my investment decision. Um, look, I think. In order to properly evaluate risk and reward, you have to understand all the you have to understand all the risk. And so, back to what we were talking about in the beginning about just like being someone who sort of like soaks up information. Mm -hmm. How do I do it? I first make sure to soak up as much information about uh, uh, the investment opportunity as I possibly can, so that I can truly, truly, truly be aware uh, uh, of the risks. And then um, on the reward side, the usual uh, sort of calculus in my mind is like, is this going to make a meaningful difference in my life, right? Is me do, is me doing this thing going to actually create like such a tangible mm. difference in my life that it's like worth the time, effort, energy, capital, like to 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 do it? Yes or no? That's sort of usually how I think about things. And like uh, again, man, fortunate. I'm I'm blessed. I have a beautiful family, beautiful home, um, gamefully employed, and so uh, I'm taken care of uh, uh, in a lot of ways relative yeah. relative to. What I, you know, what I've grown up with, what yeah. a lot of people um, I know sort of like have as well, and so, um, yeah, when I'm making investment decisions, like the grass has to be significantly greener, <laughs> and like greener on a risk-adjusted basis, not just like greener because it's something that looks cool. Got it. Moment. Yeah. I like that. Yeah, man. I like that. Yeah, man. Significantly greener. Sig significantly greener because. Um, yeah, I mean th this uh, this con this concept of like risk adjusted green is different. Everyone thinks that the next opportunity is going to be better, but you don't take into account like what you're losing in order mm. to actually sort of like and go and go get that. So yeah. like, um, yeah, it's a this it looks this shade of green, but when you factor in the risk, like in order for you to make that jump, maybe it needs to be so green it's almost blue for me huh. to like really sort of like make that jump, right? So when it comes to investing in businesses, how do you see it? Cause so you said personal, moonshot, I'm, I'm going for it. Obviously risk assessing in business is a little bit different or maybe it isn't. Explain to us how you, how you risk assess. I don't think it's different. I don't, I don't think, I don't think it's- Very it's similar a, concept? Yeah, it, it's similar concept in terms of like, what, like what type of return are you playing for? So, right in the context and what we were just talking about, like I'm playing for astronomical returns. If you put it in like the in like the proper investing context, like I'm like a venture capitalist. I'm looking for 30x okay. moonshot returns. <laughs> That's it. I want 30x. <laughs> However, you know, we're we're this later on in life, right? Kids are a little bit more established. You know, many more things demanding on uh, my resources. I sort of like have built a world around me that needs maintenance. Mm -hmm. Maybe I'm not looking at those 30x. Uh, I'm not trying to find those 30x returns. Maybe I'm trying to find three to five x returns. Mm -hmm. And so I think that the ultimate notion of yes. just like understanding like what type of returns, sense. like 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 what type of reward are you like really really shooting for? Mm -hmm. um, I think is universal, personal, business, or whatever. Yeah. Mm -hmm. um, uh, so that's universal. And then this concept of like understanding the risks, again, whatever they are, that's also universal. Personal, business, whatever. You have to you have to really be making sure that like your the investment that you're taking is calibrated toward what it is that you actually want to achieve, mm -hmm. achieve, and that you're very very versed in what ways the thing could go bad mm -hmm. prior to make you actually making the making the jump. I'm glad you said that. Does that also mean that you only invest what you're willing to lose? Yes. Or do you go above and beyond that? Yes. Only I only invest what I'm willing to lose. Mm -hmm. uh, I think that everything that I invest in has a possibility of going to going to zero. zero. Uh -huh. um, uh, and um, uh, as a result, I tend to. I that's why I'm able to actually go like pretty ham on risk is because like it's money that I'm assuming is going to be a zero in anyway. Got it. And so. It's fine. So that's why it's like I'm only gonna put a, pull yes. aside 
what can change my life. And right. so if I dart throw and, uh, and I hit double bullseye, great. We mm. all we partying, everybody. <laughs> I'm partying, you're partying, <laughs> you're partying, like we're all partying. <laughs> but if not, like I'm st- my, my family's taking right. care of, I'm still eating yeah. uh, uh, regardless. But again, that's my risk, that's like my like risk reward pro- profile. Mm-hmm. Advice I would give to like anyone yeah. is to like understand like what is like what is your sort of like profile and then uh, sort of calibrate around that. Yeah, I think that's important for our listeners to understand. It's like, I love the way you broke that down into risk profile. At the end of the day, your returns can only match your risk profile. Thousand percent. You know thousand, what I'm saying? Thousand percent. You're not. You're so not. So 30x to, means it can go to zero. Go to zero. And not like everyone's that. built like that. Like that. <laughs> it go to absolute like zero. Like that. <laughs> it went to zero. <laughs> Damn. Went to zero. Yes. Thousand percent. Yeah. Yeah, man. Listen, if you were communicating to people that were aspiring, either on the law side, mm-hmm. which you have expertise in, or on the fina- in the finance side, or even go further, finance inside of private equity, who, what would you say to them as advice to build out a career or to shift if and when necessary? Sure. So the biggest piece of advice that I would give anyone, and this is irrespective of stage, like whether you're a kid uh, in school thinking about going one of these paths, whether you're already in your career and thinking about making a switch. It's like you have to actually understand the day-to-day of what it's like to do the thing that you think that you want to do. Mm. I think that's the part that is missed by a lot of people in a lot of different spaces. It's, it's why like people that are fortunate enough to grow up with doctors and lawyers and finance people in their family – are so much more, I think, well positioned hmm. because they have the opportunity to like live and see the like Tuesday afternoon of it all hmm. on a day, right? That's what that's what's important. I love do you, like do you like, sir, like do you know what it's going to be like doing this job at two thirteen p.m. <laughs> on Tuesday? Do you know like do you know if you that's don't really if, good. That's real bro, because that's that's where that's what life life is a collection of. 2.13 p.m. <laughs> <laughs> uh, that's what life That's what life is, bro. We put on the gram all the, like, Saturday afternoon and stuff like that, but that's not life. Life is, like, 12.46. <laughs> 12 12.46, bro. That's where you're in it. At 12.46 so on fat. Thursday. That's so, isn't that so fast? That's, that's so fast. That's so good. That's so fast. And so what I'm saying is, like, what I would say to people is, like, before you think about making any, like, any jump or any move, Make sure you understand <laughs> the twelve forty six. Make sure, you may, and and so what does that mean to understand it? Go go see it. You know, ideally, best case best case scenario, you get to go shadow someone and right. like go see it. Right. You know, on the on the worst can wor, worst in the spectrum, you are like, you know, you're uh, reading articles and listening to podcasts. We have people who are open about that, but the twelve you gotta see mm. the twelve forty six and know the twelve forty six and be like, okay. I can do I can do that or not because if you if you can't all the glitz glamour and all the kind of stuff that like comes out, out of the end it doesn't matter because in order to get there you got to go through hella 1246 so <laughs> that's so true yeah that's real good bro when you highlight a success story that you look back on and you just smile it lights you up like a christmas tree you know what do you think about yeah a success story um Honestly, man, a success. I think about someone who was uh, on their deathbed, who was feeling as if they ran their race mm. well. Mm. That's 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 success, bro. I just uh, I get emotional thinking about this, man. Like I true, I, I I truly believe, and I keep this in um, I keep this in in sight constantly, man. Like you know, we're. Again, time is our time on this earth is like is finite. Is finite. It all matters, mm. right? It all matters. What we do, how we treat, you know, the person who pumps our gas, how we love our families, how we steward our resources, how much we take advantage of you know opportunities to like, you know, grow our minds, grow our bodies, like all this. It all like matters. And the biggest uh, uh, idea of success is someone who's like 
who feels like they're getting ready to like end their journey and they are just like satisfied and content with like I rang as much joy. Mm. I pushed myself when I could. I loved people when I could. Mm. Um, I helped people when I could. And just like you get to just go off with that, bro. I just, ooh, uh. I, I I love that, man. I I love so that is that is what a success story to me. And the beautiful thing about it is, man, you could have someone who's a surf champion. Mm -hmm. You could have someone who's the uh, ballerina star. You could have someone who just like you know cleaned houses uh their whole life and and they could all have a version of that it is like so real it's so mm -hmm. achievable which mm -hmm. is also so exciting about it because like we can all sort of like get there um uh but that is my idea of success and i i try to make sure uh, that i'm always orienting toward that i try to make sure that the people in my life who i give authority to to speak into my life and to hold me accountable um uh understand that that's the lens through which uh i i i move and um, I hope, I dream that that's going to be uh, me one day too. That I'm just going to look back and just be like, man, it was dope. Like, dude, dude, it's so funny you're saying it the way you're saying it because I, again, it's 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 the vision I have of the way you live. You know that it's going to be dope, or it is dope, right? Like you're living it right now, yeah. And like, <laughs> I got to get some tips from you on what looks like dope because it's working. Mm. And so what I love about this podcast, you know, Speak Life, you know, we have guests on from all different sectors, you know, of, of society, business, what have you. They're all doing something. Mm. Otherwise, you know, from an impact standpoint. And your impact is very tangible mm. after talking to you. And I look at the diversification in which you impact relationships and situations you walk into for the better. And so you're sowing seeds in that way. Mm -hmm. And so you've reaped harvests from those seeds. Mm -hmm. Like the harvest isn't always at the end there. The harvest is throughout. Mm -hmm. It's throughout the seasons. That. That's good. You know what I'm saying? That's good. And so you're in the season that you're in, which you've very eloquently spoke about today. What are you believing for your harvest for tomorrow? Man, I couldn't get a preview of the question for that. Man, that's just to be Johnny on the spot on that question. Uh, what am I, man? I, I mean, obviously, uh, I've got two young kids, so uh, what immediately comes to mind is like what I'm believing for is me instilling that uh, and those values and that sort of way of thinking into them. Mm. Uh, they are. Fortunate, they, they are going to grow up um, uh, fortunate, to, I, God willing, not to have to go through a lot of the things that I went through. Mm -hmm. I think the things that I went through obviously helped shape who I am and, and help form my perspective. And so the big uh, question that I ask myself and one of the things I'm grappling with and what, what, one of the things I try to be intentional, uh, my wife and I both try to be intentional about, is like how do I sow those seeds mm. into, into them so that they are able to take all of this and move it on to the next level. Mm, wow. Um, <laughs> um, that is what I, I that, that keeps me up, on, bro, that keeps me up, that keeps me up, that keeps me up at night. Uh, because keep you obviously up for like, a lifetime. Yeah, time is, time is, yeah, uh, is moving very, very quickly. Um, Charlie and Grayson are just dope humans. Mm -hmm. I can just, I see, I see it. <laughs> and so it blinks, it's like, bro. It, oh man, it's like, how do, how do I, how do I, how do I cultivate that in them while also being mindful of whatever they need to be and whatever they need to come like to, 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 uh, become, um, as well. And so that's the, that, that's the sort of, um, uh, sort of like tomorrow harvest that I'm, that I'm focused on. I'm thankful for. I'd say, on like the works on the work stuff, man. Um, uh, I'd say one of the things that I'm looking forward to in the years ahead is the ability to just be much more intentional about how I move in the marketplace. Mm -hmm. I think one of the negative externalities around 
moving the way that I do in terms of like trying to be helpful to people and trying to reciprocate opportunities is that like I'm at a pretty high risk of like burnout, right? Mm. It's really, I come in contact with a lot of people. So there's ways in which I can help a lot of people and like I actually get joy out of helping a lot of people. But like, by the way, I got to sleep. You know what I'm saying? <laughs> like, <laughs> I, I got to sleep. I got to like, um, yeah, my brain is like always revving at like mm -hmm. three or four X the RPMs <laughs> of like the next person, I think. And that is not, that is not sustainable. <laughs> That's not sustainable. And I so I do it. I do think that there are very real potential like negatives that could come about it, me not being more focused and intentional Got it. about how am I um like how am I gonna be moving uh through life, which is um uh I don't know the answer. I, I don't know the answer to, man. I don't That's know the good. answer to. I don't when you think about like where I've come from mm -hmm. to where I'm now like where I am now, like I think about the next whatever, 30, 40, year, 50 years of my life, mm. like where I could be, mm. where I could be then, the spaces I could be in, the people who I could be in, in touch with. Bro, that's a lot of impact. That's a lot of, Im that's a lot of impact that yeah. I could be making. Yeah, but it's like, okay, but you got to take care of yourself. You got to mm -hmm. take care of your family. Mm -hmm. um, you can't do, you can't do it all. Mm -hmm. I'm like God, but I kind of want to do it all. <laughs> I kind of want to do it all. <laughs> yeah, but yeah, chill. So um, that's good. Yeah, man. More, more moving with more uh, intentionality and just sort of like focus um, is is sort of top of mind going forward, bro. You want to talk about speak life? <laughs> Joe Tillman <laughs> speaking life in the booth in the studio. What an amazing interview. Thank you for sharing your heart, yeah. your transparency, yeah. and your wisdom, your yeah. knowledge, the stuff you actually tangibly brought to the podcast. This is going to be an amazing episode. Thank you, sir, for your time. Love you, man. Love you too, man. Thank you, man. You yeah. really you yeah. really poured out. Look, thank you for uh uh thank you for having me. Uh as I said, man, I love what you're trying to do with this space. Uh I think it's more of what everyone needs to be doing, honestly. I think um with technology, with the ability to connect directly with audiences, you have the ability to, a lot of people have the ability to speak life into mm. many people mm. um, uh, in new and innovative ways, and you are doing it. You're responding to a call that I think God placed in your heart, mm. and um, you're reaching people, you're touching people, and uh, I'm so proud of you, man. I'm excited Appreciate for you, that, for Appreciate what this you. is gonna do um, for the people in your sphere of influence, and so I'm just happy to have uh, been a little bit of a, uh, a piece of, of of your journey, man. And so I'm thankful for you. I'm thankful that we're sharing life, uh, you know, right now. And uh, I'm just excited for you know what what God has in store ahead. Amen. Joe Tillman, sowing seeds today for tomorrow's harvest. Love you, brother. You're the best, bro. Appreciate you, my man. God bless. <laughs> <All right. laughs> Dude.